What's up everyone, Alex here. Welcome to Backlog Wrap Up for May 2021. So in case this is the first time you've ever watched this kind of video before, this kind of video gives me an opportunity to talk about the games that I just didn't make videos for or didn't have a lot to say in general. But more than that, it's also an opportunity for me to check out what games you and the rest of the community are playing. Every time there's a new backlog wrap up, I'm always in the comments checking out what other people have played, and I hope you join me after the video as we check out what other people are playing. That's the discovery part of Discover Play Together, so I hope to see you in the comments and talking to people. Now, for every backlog wrap up, we typically have a raffle where we give away games, because it makes me really happy to know that you guys are playing some of the latest games that have come out. Thanks to both Koi Tecmo America and Europe, I am giving away a North American and European PS4 key for Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. You're probably wondering what you need to do to enter. All you really need to do is tell me what you played, but make sure you mention what region you're in. I'll announce the winners in a pinned post and a reply to your comment letting you know you won in about a week's time. But keep in mind, you have 24 hours to claim your prize. The reason why we have a time limit is because there are previous winners who have never checked back on whether or not they won. So I have to impose this time limit because I would love somebody to win this and play the games right away. That being said, let's go start talking about the games that I played over the past month or so. Whew, Biomutant. What hasn't been said about that game? So full disclosure, I actually got Biomutant as a review key, but I didn't talk about it to anyone until the game came out on our Backlog Battle Discord. Now, I love the idea behind this game, right? Like, animal characters doing kung fu or even doing shooting, if that's your thing. But this whole idea of mixing kung fu, martial arts action with some shooting elements sounded really appealing. And when I actually played the game, the environments were really inviting, and there was some sort of appeal to the gameplay to an extent. But what I didn't know is that the game was actually made by about 20, 25 people. And a lot of those people came from Avalanche, who also made Just Cause. And keep in mind, I didn't know this while I was playing the game. So the further I got into it, what I started noticing was that the melee combat was just not viable at all. Now keep in mind, like I was actually putting a lot of my attributes into strength so that that way I could deal more damage. In fact, I actually picked a melee class to do this because one of the selling points of Biomune is that it had a Batman Arkham style combat system. The problem is that the game was not balanced for that kind of combat. So there were situations where I would just get pelted by bullets as if I was playing a shooter, for example, and the bullets would just be so honed in on the character, it made it feel like I picked the wrong class. Now, I have to say that I haven't played Biomutant since it's been patched, and your experience might be very different from mine. And if that's the case, please, please, please let me know in the comments below. I don't really know if I'm going to come back and play the game per se, but if you let me know about your experiences in the comments and kind of share like what's changed or anything like that, maybe I'll take the time to actually go back to it. Every time I talk about a game critically, it always hurts me because I want every single video game to succeed, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of its current disposition. These are patchable pieces of software, and if there's a way to redeem themselves, more power to them. The next game that I've been playing is called Alba, a wildlife adventure. By the time this video is released, this would have probably come out on multiple platforms, but I originally played this on iOS because it was part of Apple Arcade. My wife actually bought me a brand new iPhone fairly recently, so I started installing a whole bunch of games. These developers made Monument Valley 1 and 2, and these two games are some of my favorite puzzle games of the past decade, not exaggerating. They also made a game called Assemble with Care, which is kind of a very interesting game because it has a narrative hook where you're trying to just fix objects. Now, in case you're wondering, you don't need to be like an electrician or an engineer or something to fix these objects. It's actually very intuitive. Maybe I should have included that as like part of the games that I played. Anyways, 
Alba, a wildlife adventure, puts you in the role of Alba. And what's actually really cool about this game is that it uses the iPhone as a viewfinder of sorts when you're taking photos. So think of it as kind of like a Pokemon Snap meets like an open world adventure game. There's no combat in the game. You're just really trying to save this island from being commercialized and having its natural resources kind of depleted. And it sounds more dire than it is, but it's actually really chill. You're just exploring the city. You're you're talking to people, you're picking up trash. I know that sounds really silly, but it's very appealing and it's very soothing to play as. And I actually played this game quite a bit when I was heading to our very first Portland meetup with the rest of the Backlog Battle community, which, you know, I hope you've seen like the photos in the community tab. But yeah, if you have like Apple Arcade, go check this game out. It's something that I really want to play through. And if not, it's also available on other platforms as well. So go check it out if you're looking for like a really chill game to play. The next game that I'm playing through is Ghost Trick. Ghost Trick is from the guys who made Phoenix Wright, and Capcom graciously patched the iOS version so it'll run on modern platforms, which I am so happy, because about two months ago, I actually installed Ghost Trick on my old iPhone to try to play it, but unfortunately it didn't run. So imagine my surprise when I heard about a few weeks or so ago that Capcom went back and actually patched it, and that made me really super happy. The idea behind Ghost Trick is that you're literally like a blob of a soul and you're trying to figure out why you died and who you are and what's your connection to some of the people that are getting murdered, so to speak. What's really fascinating about Ghost Trick is that it combines elements of point-and-click adventure games with some of the comedy and humor of Phoenix Wright. And what I really, really like about the game is that it has a strong art design that features rotoscope animation. In case you don't know what a rotoscope is, it's the kind of animation style that you see in like the original Prince of Persia or even in some Disney films. But it's really smooth and it really gives the game a very different flavor when compared to something like Phoenix Wright. I think what surprised me about this game is that after installing it, after so many years of not playing it, I literally went through the first chapter as though I knew what I was doing. And so that really surprised me quite a bit. We're currently in chapter three right now, and we're kind of going through the game at a pretty good clip. And so if you are looking for a kind of adventure game that is obviously made by the guys who made Phoenix, right? There is a DS version, but I'm not sure if that's easy to find these days because, you know, scarcity and all that stuff. But it is on iOS. So if you're curious, go check it out. The last game that I want to talk about is World of Demons. Now, this is the surprise Platinum game that came out in April, but I didn't really get far into it until fairly recently when I got my new iPhone. First thing I did was I installed World of Demons, and that was that. And I gotta say, like... I actually paired my DualShock and I'm playing it as if I'm playing it on console and it plays just like a platinum game, which is fantastic. What's different about this game though is that it is kind of a simplified platinum game in a way. You have an attack button, you have kind of a dodge button, but you also have access to yokai and these different yokai actually provide you with different kinds of attacks that kind of allow you to create like different kinds of combos and I think there's actually something magical about that being able to play this on the phone because I, I did try playing it using just the touch controls, but it didn't work out too well. Now, I am being gifted a backbone controller, which essentially turns the iPhone into like a switch like handheld device, which I'm really excited for that, by the way, especially for this game and Genshin Impact, which I did install, but I didn't play. But if you have Apple Arcade and you're out and about, and you've got a hankering for an action game, World of Demons is highly, highly recommended. So go check that out. And that's all the games that I played in May. Well, most of it, because I can't talk about the rest of them. But now I want to hear what you have played over the past month or so. Post your thoughts in the comments below. And remember, if you want to enter the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection raffle for North America and Europe, PS4 code, make sure to identify your region, and then check back next week to see if you won. And more importantly, check out what other people have posted in the comments, because I'd love to see you guys interacting with each other, because I'm going to be there too. I'm, I'm going to know, okay? This is not a threat, but I'm going to know. So check out what other people are playing. Ask people why they're playing these games, what interests them, what they like, because this is a great opportunity for everybody to find out other games that they might not know about. That goes for you, you, and you. Yes, I'm literally pointing at the screen while I'm saying this. 
So thank you guys for joining me for this backlog wrap up, and I hope to see you on future backlog wrap ups as well. Most importantly, I'll see you in the comments right now. Thanks, guys.